Uh, this is a video by Pet Rock. Um, I'm working on my wife's uh, 98 Ford Mustang. It's a 3.8 liter uh, convertible, as you can see. Um, today I'm going to be working on the, uh, the hinge pins because as you can see the alignment of the door is quite skewed. If you open the door it actually grinds and touches right about right about in here every time I open the door. So the, and the problem is that the hinge pins and the bushings inside are worn out. So if you look closely, if I can get this in the shot. So, it's hard to do with one hand, sorry. If I lift up on the door, you can see that the hinge on the bottom is moving. This, this part of the hinge is moving separate from this. This part, it should not move at all. The problem is there's a bushing in between this piece and this piece that that pin rides in. And at that, uh, over time, uh, the, that bushing gets worn out. It's only made of brass. So uh, um, every once you have to replace it over time. You have to you have to replace it when it gets worn. Um, so in this today we're going to be working on replacing this one, the bottom one, and the top one. So this can be this is not a hard job. It's more of a it's just more of a balancing act because you have to remove each pin and then basically balance the door, make sure it doesn't fall off and fall down. Um, uh, while you remove the old bushings, remove the old uh, uh, pin, remove the old bushings, and install the new one in reverse. Um, other than that, it's pretty much a straightforward job. So the problem with the, uh, the reason I'm making this video is because that uh, uh, there really aren't any videos on doing hinge pins on uh, this model or style uh, Mustang, uh, let alone any, really any cars. There's only a couple videos that I was able to find on YouTube about this. Um, they were very helpful, but they don't necessarily pertain to this this specific car. Um, the main problem with this car is that there's this big plate in front of the hinge pin, so you can't really just get in there with a Dremel and just cut it, cut the hinge pin down in the uh, in the middle and just pop it out. Uh, you have to grind the pin at the top or bottom to get it out. So what makes it even more fun is that this bolt right here uh, for the door actually gets in the way. Um, you can, for any kind of grinding you want to do. Uh, so there's a couple tricks on how to get to this. Uh, one includes just removing the bolt and uh, uh, grinding off the top and then reinstalling the bolt when you're done uh, so you don't put any too, uh, too much stress on the, uh, the other hinges. Um, and that's the, that's the route I'm going to be going today. Basically to start this job, the first thing you do, or the first thing I did actually, was removed, I removed the window and the... Uh, the other, uh, I removed the window and the uh, um, the regulator. You don't have to do this. I just did that because this uh, the window regulator got basically all damaged from uh, basically getting a miss from the misalignment. It hitting the uh, it hitting the window sill, hitting the window up here. Basically, put too much stress on it and it popped it and it uh, uh, bent the the old window regulator. So uh, um, I removed it as I'm while I'm doing this, just to make the door lighter. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some tape and put it all down up in between that seam because this door, when the once I pop those hinges, is gonna be moving a lot. So uh, you don't want to mess up your uh, uh, your paint as this door is uh, uh, moving around. I'm not gonna do this job uh, uh, step by step on all on video like some guys do. I just don't have that kind of time, nor am I uh, uh, that confident with my video skills. So I'm gonna be cutting in and out. Uh, in between sections basically showing you the uh, the main bullet points of how to do this job So the first step is just setting some tape in here uh, trying to get it all uh, uh, trying to get the um, uh, Protect the paint All right, so I have the tape all up and down the uh, down the seam You can see kind of how close the seam is on the bottom versus how thick it is on the top, just from the alignment, just how bad the alignment is. Anyway, so I just basically put some tape on this side and fold the, folded the crease, folded the excess over just to protect that seam. And getting this side was much easier. Just open the door and uh, you got all sorts of room just to basically lay a piece of tape down here and just fold it over. That's all I did. Anyway, so next step is to prep the actual area I'm going to be grinding which is some light on this thing uh, 
right there. So what I want to do is I want to put some uh, some kind of protection on the top of the hinge where I'm going to be grinding so I don't screw up the paint, chew up the paint too badly. Uh, and then I'm also going to be removing that one bolt right there just to get a little bit easier access because it is kind of tight fit in here. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my uh, my fire extinguisher, make sure that that's close by because there's going to be some might be some sparks. I don't want to you know cause a fire, and if I do, I want to be able to put it out pretty damn quick. Um, anyway, so uh, I'll be right back. So here you go. I got the uh, Ariel prepped up. It's basically just uh, I took some painters tape, put that over top the uh, on top of the hinge around the around the top of the pin, and then put some duct tape on top of that. The duct tape is actually what's really doing giving the protection. Uh, the reason I did it this way in, in this kind of layering is so that when I take it off, I take the uh, tape off, it's not going to leave back, the duct tape's not going to leave a gooey residue. The painter's tape will just come off clean. Uh, anyway, as you can see, I've removed the uh, the bolt that was right there, and uh, it's a 13 millimeter, in case you're wondering, uh, but it does open up the space a whole bunch to uh, get in there with the grinding wheel. This isn't very easy to do with one hand, but basically the, the whole point is to make enough room so I can get my Dremel. Yeah, it's old and yeah, it actually is made by JC Penney, but whatever, it works, I don't care. Uh, so anyway, there we go. So you get the grinding wheel, put it on top of the, uh, on top of the pin, move it around a bunch, and basically grind that off. Uh, it's gonna take a while, make sure you check your work, make sure you're, uh, you know, you're not grinding too deep, um, just you know, take your time. The whole point of this, you know, the whole uh, uh, the benefit of this is sorry, not the benefit, but the it's better to to take your time on this. You don't want to rush it and possibly screw up and mess up your hinge or mess up your paint or or whatever. Uh, anyway, so another thing to make sure you have is a fire extinguisher. Uh, make sure you have one around. There's going to be some sparks when you're doing this, so if you set something on fire like the carpet, you want to be able to uh, put it out really quickly. Um, it's also just a good thing to have. Um, anyway, so I'm going to start grinding on it. I've grinded, started a little bit on it already, but I'm going to uh, go the rest of the way, and uh, I'll be right back. Oh yeah, I forgot another thing to say. You know, I forgot to say is that you need to have eye protection. It's very important because again, sparks are flying. You're going to probably have your face pretty damn close to this thing while you're doing it. So you want to have some kind of some kind of eye protection. These are mine. Anyway, they're dirty. I need to clean them. Anyway, I'll be right back. So as you can see, I'm, I'm most of the way through. I've got it almost down to the uh, down to the flat, and as you can see, the tape is coming handy because it's not that easy to hold that thing on there. Especially you got to keep moving the uh, moving the Dremel around and making checking your work, making sure you're not going the wrong spot, making sure that you're you're trying to cut it down smooth-ish so you can get to the middle. Um, anyway, and this is really loud. So again, I can't stress enough: wear some ear protection. Uh, as well as eye protection because there's little bits of sparks and, and little bits of metal flying all over the place. Okay, so I got it all ground down smooth. Um, I got it all, I got the pin basically flush with the uh, hinge. It did take away a little bit of the paint, but I'm gonna just hit that with some touch up when I'm done. So if you, as you can see, I've got the hinge started on its way out. Um, uh, started on its way out by using a punch down through the top using some tape on the door as well as on the uh, frame, the A-pillar, to uh, protect the paint and basically threading a punch in here and trying not to hit the paint. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit hard but you take your time and you can do it. Um, once you've got it this far out it's a good idea to reinsert the old bolt so this doesn't spin uh, to reduce the chance of it spinning and then also you uh, uh, want to start thinking about how to brace the door because once this pins out this door is going to want to uh, going to want to spin going to want to drop this way so you want to have something underneath the door like a floor jack or uh, even better a motorcycle jack um, to prevent it from dropping so the lower pin has the same problem as the top one where you have to remove the top of the bolt right next to it to uh, uh, to get room uh, access in there so you or you can grind it off. Um, so uh, the I want to keep so while I'm doing this I want to keep the lower pin, the upper pin still partially in the hinge so that uh, to hold keep help hold the uh, uh, door together so it doesn't you know so it doesn't uh, uh, rock back and forth or start to 
put too much stress on the hinge. Uh, so once I do start pop, uh, um, so once I do get get the top of that hinge uh, ground off, I can basically lift up on the uh, uh, lift up on the on the door in order to relieve the pressure on the lower hinge without having the whole thing fall apart on me. Uh, so that I can hammer out the uh, uh, the bottom the bottom pin. So uh, next, I'm going to mask off the uh, the bottom hinge like I did for the top uh, with with some tape and, and uh, remove that bolt and start grinding. So uh, now I got the I got the paint uh, sorry I got the painter's tape with the duct tape over top, a couple layers of duct tape over top of it <clears throat> to mask off the area uh, so that I can go in there and grind it off. Now notice how the top hinge is still in place, uh, is still in place, uh, only partially, it's only in there about uh, about halfway, or not even a quarter actually, uh, and <clears throat> there is nothing at the moment supporting the door, sorry for all the movement, don't, it'll make you sick, I have my uh, motorcycle jack underneath at the moment in, in preparation to have to support the door. But at the moment, I don't want it supported because if I support it, then the top hinge will literally just fall out. It's our, that's how it got as far as it got now. It literally just popped right out once I supported the door. Well, I got it pretty much ground down smooth with not a whole bunch of collateral damage on the, around the outside. Um, so now I'm getting ready to start whacking it with a hammer and a, and a punch. So I have supported it with the jacks with my motorcycle jack. So that the, the weight of the door is actually on the jack and not on the hinge, or at least as much as I can get. Um, I also took the precaution of removing the door uh, door chime or door jar or whatever button, uh, so that I don't by accident hit it with a hammer as I'm as I'm getting in there, because the chisel comes right up or the the punch comes right up through here. And if I if I'm off by a little bit, I didn't want to whack it and break it. So it's a uh, let's see what size was it? It was a 15 millimeter open wrench, uh, open end wrench or or box if you got it uh, to get it out. It's not in that tight. It's quite small. So uh, then once you get it loose, you can pull it out. You pull the wire out a little bit, and then the plug. If you look closely. You can see the plug inside, it's just three little pins uh, that you just basically, I just pulled on it and it came out. I'm not sure if that's normal or not, or if there's uh, the little clips that are on the end of this are, uh, you can kind of see them. If the clips on the end of those are supposed to be a little too uh, more taut than they were, or tight than the, tight, hold on tighter than they were. But uh, yeah, I just pulled on it and it popped right out. So. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to tuck this back inside a little bit so I don't smash up the connector, but not so far that I can't get back to it. So I'm just leaving it, leaving a little bit of this rubber out so that I can uh, still get access to it. Um, so then I've basically taken a set of needle nose, uh, needle nose uh, vice grips, and just clamped them down on my, uh, on my punch so I can get it in here, so I can get it in here a little bit easier without getting my hand in the way and and have much more access so as you can see how close the uh, the button was to the to the uh, head of the uh, punch so you don't want to you don't want to whack that so yeah anyway so I'm gonna start beating on this thing and get this thing out All right, so I'm still beating on this thing I've been working on it for a little while it's a little bit stubborn doesn't want to come out if you can see the back of the uh, the back over here, I had to put some tape to protect it from the chisel coming through, and I think I've scourged the paint a little bit over there. Um, I've also had to I zoom out a little bit, put a little bit, uh, bit of paint, uh, sorry, tape on the uh, side here and here, and on the catch plate. I'm not really sure what this, this is called. It's for the button to stop the beeping. Anyway, uh, so because uh, um, what was happening was as my hammer was coming down. Let me go uh, show you. So as my hammer was coming down, I'd hit the hit the pin square, but it would arc or it would bounce or something like that. So um, I added some a uh, little bit of protection for that. So you can see I've I've got I don't know if you can see it, but a little bit of some some kiss marks on the uh, on the duct tape. Um, and this bulge right here is actually the 
rubber. This bolt right here is the rubber piece, so I'm kind of using that to also hold it from falling back into the door. Um, anyway, so I'm uh, still working on this thing. So this is about as this is where I'm at right now. Uh, you can see I've I've beaten on it pretty well, um, and it's uh, it's been a little stubborn. Um, so yeah, working on it. So as you can see, I ground off a little bit more, and I guess that did the trick. It's starting to come a little bit slowly but surely. Uh, so yeah, I'll be out in a second. The bottom one will be out in a second. Okay, so it's out, or it's not out all the way, but it's it's popped. So part of the reason it's so hard is if you notice, you got little striations or striations, whatever you want, how you want to pronounce it, on the bottom here that are biting into the bottom of the hinge, and so that it makes it a little bit harder for it to come out. And I dropped my light. Um, so what I've done now is I've got both of them about halfway out, if you notice. And then I've also set up my motorcycle jack. I got a, got a my light. Uh, I've set up my motorcycle jack to prop it up, as well as set up a tie-down strap hanging off the uh, uh, garage door frame to basically prevent it from wobbling. So the, the floor jack is holding the, holding the uh, door up and the uh, uh, strap is preventing it from, you know, from rotating back and forth like that. Um, anyway, so next step is basically to pull the pins the rest of the way. So I'm gonna set up the pliers like this and then I'm gonna hit the pliers right here with a hammer and that should just pull them the rest of the way out. Uh, they're relatively loose right now because the majority of the weight of the door is being held up by my uh, uh, floor jack. So it's uh, not gonna take very much effort to get them the rest of the way out. So I have the door completely removed from the uh, vehicle. As you can see, there's a little bit of room, as far as, a little slack I should say, as far as the uh, wiring goes, so you don't have to necessarily uh, disconnect all the wiring although you can't really get more than this there isn't like if I pull on it it's not gonna come if you want to separate the door any further than this you're gonna need to disconnect the connector that is uh, inside here inside the, uh, the frame um, so as you can see I had to adjust my uh, just my straps and my, and my jack a little bit to make this be able to stand up straight stand upright um, so I have the jack close to the car and then I have my straps going straight up into the uh, hanging off my uh, um, off my garage door uh, frame. There are probably a thousand different ways to do this but this is how I did it. Um, basically take the take my straps and wrap them and wrap them around. Let me back out a little further. Uh, and wrap them around the door uh, one loop one strap goes down all the way around and then up and then back down again and around and, and around and up and back around in the loop and uh, connecting in the middle uh, the reason for this is to make it so that the uh, uh, to have some kind of lateral and uh, that's not lateral but uh, basically preventing it from preventing the door from going like this as I'm working on it it's not completely rock solid as you can see but it's good enough to hold right now um, as I try to get the uh, as I try to get the bushings out so here's what the pins look like after they've been removed one on the right is the bottom uh, was the bottom pin the one on the left was the top pin you can see a noticeable amount of wear on the right pin where the bushings would be, uh, where it goes through the through the uh, through the door hinge, um, which is and that in conjunction with the uh, uh, the wear that was on the bushings themselves creates for a good significant or at least enough amount of, uh, enough space to keep things wobbly, uh, and are probably and is why my uh, door the door also doesn't line up properly. Um, so uh, yeah, so next step I'm going to. Uh, bang out the uh, pry out the uh, bushings the old bushings and uh, start pressing in the new ones okay so I was able to get the I get them out um, I just used a uh, small chisel uh, 
and just basically hit into it and uh, uh, basically deform them to the point of destruction kind of thing. Um, they're just they're made out of they're made out of brass, so it's not like they requires a lot of force. Um, once they're deformed enough, they'll literally just fall out. Um, so yeah, I got all four of them done. So now the next step is I'm gonna clean up uh, clean up a little bit the area, uh, get all the grime and dust out of there, um, and uh, start putting things back together again. Start pressing in the the new bushings. So I want to make a quick note of uh, earlier in my uh, video, I mentioned that you want to have a fire extinguisher handy. If you look inside, if you look inside the uh, fender, there's a whole bunch of uh, leaves and and whatever things from uh, uh, flammable stuff basically inside the fender um, that have just accumulated over the what uh, 15 years this car's been in existence. Um, so uh, uh, I don't think that they've ever been cleaned out. Anyway, so those kind of things are what would possibly catch fire from all the little sparks that are flying from when you're grinding everything. So you want to be careful of that um, and just, uh, uh, you know, either clean them out first, but it would be a good idea too uh, to do. But um, uh, having a fire extinguisher handy is, is almost uh, a necessity for this job. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, better be safe than sorry. Uh, I also added a towel in between the door and the fender just to, for a little bit of added cushioning uh, for the because uh, the tape you know it'll hold up a little bit but it won't take a lot of abuse so I discovered that uh, 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 <clears throat> excuse me the kit that I had received from from uh, the auto parts store uh, the one on the right is actually it, it'll work However, it's not the best fit. It's not the most accurate fit. After doing some searching online, I discovered that there's another kit also made by Dorman, uh, the one on the left, that is a lot closer to the original spec. Uh, if you notice, the uh, pin in the middle right here is the original pin minus the, the head that I cut off. Uh, and you have the other pin that is, that is uh, uh, about the same length. Um, the difference between the two is that one obviously is the length. The other is that the uh, this kit has a uh, C clip that you put on the end of it to hold it on uh, to hold it in place. Where this one uses a, a, a hole has a hole for a, um, if I can zoom in maybe get your shot of that hole. Yeah, so you had a hole for for a uh, a hole for a uh, cutter pin. Well, I'm not having a good time with the words today. Anyway, so uh, you have a slot here for a C clip. Um, it's arguable on which one's better, but as far as a uh, uh, C clip versus cotter pin, but uh, the this one is the is the proper length, so uh, I'm gonna go with this one. Um, the part number the part number is I don't know if you can read that, but it's Dorman three eight four three eight. The other one was the uh, the one that I was originally given was three eight three nine five. Um, this one is, is the, the one on the right is the one that was listed for, uh, Mustangs. Um, and, uh, uh, I think it's actually originally designed for Fox bodies, not for, uh, uh SN95s like, like this one is. Um, this kit over here, however, is not listed by Dorman on, uh, for Mustangs. It, do, it just says, uh, various Fords, uh, 91 through 2005, which this one actually falls under. Um, so, uh, uh. The bushing size is also identical. The bushing size here is uh, 0.48, and the bushing size here is also 0.48 inches. However, the box actually lists it wrong. The box actually says it's 0.49 when uh, it's actually 0.48. Uh, there's a pretty big bit difference in that because one of the one of the uh, things you have to do, which I wasn't aware of before starting this job is that you need to drill out the hinge a little bit in order to be able to fit the bushings inside. And so the, the size is actually critical if you want because you have to find a drill bit that will fit properly uh, to make the bit, to make the bushings right. And if you go if you go with the number that's written on the box for this kit, it's going to you're going to get too large of a uh, of a drill and you're going to drill it out and you're basically going to ruin the uh, ruin the hinge. Might as well just buy a new hinge at that point.
Um, anyway, so, uh, uh, so the next step I'm going to have to do, which I wish I'd known before, is I'm going to have to remove the part of the hinge, um, the hinge that's going to be, that's attached to the door. There we go. I'm going to have to remove this part of the hinge, the hinge that's actually attached to the door. Uh, and and so I can get it over on my on my bench and drill it out. If I had known that ahead of time, then I would uh, then this would have been a lot uh, not a lot easier, but a reasonably more easier easier job, where I would have just removed the top um, the top one, uh, drilled off the top, uh, drilled off the top of the 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 pin, pushed it through, removed the uh, removed the part of the hinge that's attached to the door. Drilled it out, put all the bushings in, put it up, put the top back together again, and then done the bottom, and not had to worry about this balancing act that I have right now with the uh, uh, with the bottom uh, since I have both hinges undone. Um, but since I'm already here, I already have the balance. It's already it's already you know balanced pretty well. Hinge off, and I have it in my vise. So to show you what I'm talking about, you have the inner diameter of the hole where the bushing goes is about. Let's see if you can see that. It's about 0.42. Uh, it's flashing because the battery's starting to go bad on uh, go dead on the uh, on my mic. Anyway, so then if you look at the uh, the diameter of the actual bushing itself, it's about 0.48. So the next step is we have to drill out these holes, the, these two holes. Um, to a larger size in order to uh, uh, take that, you know, uh, in order to uh, fit the bushing. So the two sizes of uh, drill bits that I was able to find that were close are uh, um, a 15 32nd and a 16 64. Um, 15 32nd is about a 0.46 and a uh, uh, di uh, uh, outer diameter and a uh, um, if you just do the math in a calculator it's pretty easy 15 divided by 32 um, and then uh, 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 the 1664 is a, about a 0.484 uh, which is slightly larger than the actual um, than the actual butch bushing so I'm going to start with the 1532 see how that goes and then I might have to drill it to the uh, to the um, 1664 uh, Maybe. I don't know. I'll find out in a minute. Okay, I'll be right back. Alright, so I've already got the bottom one done. I didn't record that size, so I'll get you a, 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 basically how you do the top. So the top one, the by the way, the 15 16th bit, uh, 15 32nd bit is uh, the one you want, by the way. The bushing uh, will fit. Um, I tried a, uh, uh, I tried on a piece of scrap, uh, scrap metal, the 1630, uh, 16, 16 64ths drill bit that I had, and it was just too big. The, the, the bushing just literally just fell through. It didn't even, it didn't even have any bite to it at all. You want it to be pressed in, uh, ultimately. Anyway, so, to press it in, uh, let me find a tool that I had made, or I made, I should say, I, uh, put together. So, uh, uh, this is a, the, this is a M8, 1.25 uh, threaded bolt. Um, it ha it fits the inner diameter of the bushing almost perfectly. Uh, so an M8 uh, 1.25 bolt and obviously matching nuts. And so you basically you put the one washer on top. So you get the bolt, washer, bushing, washer, and then another and then the bolt and the rest of it. And you just basically thread it down. Now, uh, you just thread this bolt down, or nut down, I should say. Uh, you can't go all the way, though. The depth, of the, uh, uh, the depth of the bushing is, de is larger than the actual thickness of this metal. So uh, uh, you can only go down to a certain point. So don't just keep cranking on it, because if, if you just start cranking on it, you'll, uh, uh, you'll basically blow out the bushing and make it useless. Uh, you have to start over again. Anyway, so uh, you go down until basically you find a, a good amount of resistance, and then you stop. You back it out a little bit, and then you hit down on it to press the uh, hit down on it with a hammer to press the bu uh, bushing in the rest of the way. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap left on the uh, bushing, but the bushing is uh, you can't really see it with the light, but the bushing is all the way down. It's actually now flush with the bottom of the bracket. Sorry for the extra movement. Anyway, so uh, the next step basically is you hit it with a hammer from the top to press it the rest of the way down. Uh, just take a hammer and 
hit it right here. I'm not a lefty, and so this isn't going to work well. I need to have two hands to stabilize the bracket and the, uh, use the hammer at the same time. So sorry, I can't get this on camera. So I've got them. Uh, I got the bushings put in. They're all nice and flush. As you can see. If you also look closely, you can see how the bushing extends out past the uh, bottom of the bracket. So that's why you can't torque it all the way down with that bolt, um, the bolt and uh, nut combo to, when, while pressing it in. So you got to tap it the rest of the way in with a hammer or you know dead blow hammer or something like that. Um, I also repainted them because they're all sorts of jacked up, uh, and I also repainted the uh, I also repainted the other end corresponding top part. I went to AutoZone and picked up a can of uh, this stuff, the Duplicolor. Um, perfect match, whatever, you know, it's made for Ford and it was red and so I figured, eh, it's a door hinge, I'll try it. And it actually is working out, it's actually closer to what the real color was than, uh, um, than uh, uh, I thought it would be. You know, take a look, you can't, it's kind of hard to tell other than the dirt on the old stuff, um, like if you look at that hinge, only half of it's painted. The, uh, if you look at it, over here, this part right here is not painted, and with the with the spray paint, and you can't really tell the difference, other than you know dirt. Uh, so I'm actually kind of impressed. So next step I have to do is I have to reinstall these. Uh, um, I have to reinstall these uh, uh, hinges, and. Uh, uh, the hinges are used while adjusting. If you notice, the holes are slightly elongated. Get a better background shot. There you go. Uh, the holes are slightly elongated. So what the, uh, the the design is is as you're adjusting, you've got to move the hinge in and out to uh, adjust the door uh, to make it line up pr uh, properly. Um, the door, the hinges that are on the uh, that are actually attached to the frame of the car, they adjust the uh, up down. Uh, sorry, they adjust the up, down, and back and forth angle or vectors uh, of uh, uh, of the door, uh, where the these hinges um, adjust the in and out, the uh, uh, you know the the to make it stick out further from the vehicle or in uh, closer to the vehicle. Um, so that's basically what these are gonna uh, because these have been removed. You're gonna have to adjust these slightly uh, to get them uh, uh, to get everything lined up again. Now. If your car is as old as this one, which it should be if you're watching this video and have a Mustang of this, of this vintage, you can kind of see where the old hinge used to be. Uh, and by, if, you get your, the, if you put the hinge back on in that general, in that general spot, you should be pretty close uh, to being aligned. Um, you may need some fine adjustments uh, back and forth to, uh, uh, to get the, um, everything lined up again flush but uh, uh, you should be pretty close if you get put the hinge back on uh, where it used to be um, assuming it hadn't moved over the however number of years your car has been around one thing I'm going to note is I'm going to be inserting the door hinge pin from the bottom up on both top and bottom now the reasoning behind this is so here's my train of thought others may have different reasoning but so the stock hinge pin if you notice on the right side, there's some uh, little grooves in it that make the uh, uh, that will bite into the hinge. Now these hinges, were, these pins used to be in like this, uh, so the the serrations were on the bottom. Now I measured this diameter, uh, the inner diameter of this uh, hole and this one, and the bottom is actually bigger, so that to make room for these serrations. Now the new Hinge pins have the same serrations only on one side, just like the stock pins. So that means that these serrations are, need to be need to line up in here. You can sort of see the serrations that I'm talking about, the grooves in the bottom pin. Focus, come on, focus. There you go. You can kind of see them in the bottom pin a little bit. Um, that's what I'm talking about. And I've painted over the top one, so you can't really see anything in that one. But if you look. I can slide this up fairly simply through the bottom, and it's snug up against the uh, uh, up against the, the serrations. So all I need to do is just tap this up and through, and it'll be in. Now, if I did did it from the reverse, which is where you 
kind of think that you'd want to do it where you'd want to have the top of the, the head of the uh, the pin on the top, not the C clip, which is the way I was thinking it would have to be, but it's not. You actually want it you want it the other way around. Um, now if I try to get this through, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you look, the bottom, because it's because the bottom is actually wider, this is now loose. You can kind of hear it clicking. You don't want that. So it just shows how this is smaller than this. So you need to have this up. If you look, there's no there's no clicking when I have it that direction. So that'll explain why I have it this way. Okay, here's a little tip. So I've got the uh, top hinge in, and I went with putting the hinges in together first, and then later I'll attach the door. Um, because getting in here to hammer these uh, hammer these uh, pins in was just a bit of a pain in the butt. So I just I decided just to separate the door a little bit. It'll give me a lot more clearance, and then later on I can I can mate these two uh, these surfaces up. So I've got that one in with the C clip in, and you can see it's all the way all the way on. Um, that last bit where you have to get the uh, the grooves in, the grooves like these. Uh, you got to apply a decent amount of force, so you want to have as much room as you can to, to get in there. Um, so having the door attached to the hinges is just going to be is just going to make it a pain in the butt. Anyway, so uh, um, I've almost I don't have the the bottom one in yet. I was saving that, seeing if I can get that on video. So you can see it's still pretty loose. Uh, let me back out. It's still pretty loose. Uh, it's because I don't have the pin in all the way. So once you've got it started. You should be able to push it or just tap it with a with a small hammer. You want a small hammer in this spot because it's quite cramped in there. So you just try to whack it, get as much in there as you can. Trying not to hit. Check on it, got a little bit left. Damn, I really suck at this hammer. This hammer today. You need to get it as close all the way up there as possible, otherwise you won't be able to get enough groove, uh, enough of the groove at the top to, uh, to get the C-clip in. So you have to hammer this in as far as it'll go. And let's see, a little bit more. Wow. The hand eye coordination of a toddler today. Uh, okay, so there you go. It's all clipped, it's all, all the way up. Now just get, get the C clip. So get the C clip in, and all you do is just push it. Done. It's in. There we go. If you can rotate it, if you can rotate it like this, and you know you got it in all the way. Uh, you want to make sure that you got it in all the way, otherwise you don't want this thing popping off. Um, now chances of the pin falling out uh, with, if the C-clip pops out is mm, kind of low because of those uh, serrations at the bottom that you had to press and basically hammer in. Uh, that's biting into the metal hinge uh, pretty good, so it's, it'll, it'll stay in there for a good while um, if that C-clip pops out. Uh, now, oh, excuse me, so uh, now the next part you have to do is to Line these back up. Now remember, as I said, you got to, you try to mount the uh, get these uh, latches as close to where their previous location was as possible, and that way you don't have to do as much adjustment as uh, you might think. I'm uh, sorry, um, as much adjust, uh, adjustment as uh, um, if you hadn't. So uh, yeah, now I'll be right back. So I've got them. I got the bolts started. You don't want to just tighten these down with a wrench immediately. You want to get them all started first by hand so make sure you don't cross thread them because if you cross thread these things you're just in a whole world of hurt right there you either have to figure out how to weld in a uh, weld in a new bolt or use a helicoil drill it out use a helicoil which means you got to remove the entire door yeah not fun so you want to start doing these by hand get them in there loosely all four of them making sure they're all in uh, started pretty good and then once you do that you can start tightening them down um, a ratcheting, uh, uh, ratcheting, ra uh, a ratchet would be handy here, or uh, you know, a, a ratcheting box end like, like one of these. 
One of these dandies uh, is very helpful here. Anyway, so I'll be right back once I get this uh, tightened down a little bit. Okay, so I think I've got it as close as I'm gonna get it. Um, the door opens smoothly. If I can jump over my stuff. The door opens smoothly, doesn't bind, doesn't move up and down, thankfully, anymore like it used to. If you notice, I can pick it up and by picking it up, it actually moves the car instead of moving the door. That's what you want. So the other thing is, the only thing I'm not gonna be able to do is this bottom one, this bottom uh, hinge, I can't get it to go any further in like it needs to. It needs to go in like, I don't know, what is that, like a millimeter or, two or so, and uh, um, I'm just gonna leave it as is. The door opens and closes nicely. It doesn't bind. It doesn't rub here, even though it gets quite close. It doesn't actually rub here, which uh, which it used to do. Um, so I'm I'm quite happy with it. So one thing that has um, happened, which is probably going to happen to some of you out there, is that this should just click in when I close the door, but it doesn't. So if you notice, the door latch is hitting. Hitting that looks like a brass piece first, and then the door is actually moving, being forced down slightly because of it. I can kind of, you, you can feel it in the door itself. If you notice, you can kind of hear it too. Yeah. So uh, um, I need to adjust that. Some of you are probably going to have a similar problem where they're going to need to adjust that too. Okay. So the. Uh, striker plate as it's called is uh, uh, adjusted via a 40 a T40 Torx bit um, you loosen these two bolts and then this can and well, I'm really zoomed in uh, you loosen these two bolts and then it can move up down forward and back slightly and so basically the key what the manual says to do is to um, basically loosen it like this and then close the door on it a little bit uh, so that you can so that it'll align and then you hold it there as you when you open the door again and then just tighten it down that's as simple as that